Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, you're all good. I'm I'm going live. All right, bye. You're live. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Young Wonks podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about this awesome service called Remo.tv and how you can use it to set up your own remote control robots online. So Remo.tv is a service that allows you to connect arbitrary robots online with a camera and controls so they can, can be controlled through the internet. Uh, now you might ask, why do I need a separate service to do this? Well, the answer is that it's actually quite complicated to uh, set up a full streaming service that will encode and bounce video data all the way from your robot to a website and then to someone who's viewing it. So it's much easier to use a service like this. So first thing I'm going to go into is just screen share and show you. Remo.tv looks like this. It's got, a, it's got a website, lots of robots available. The green ones are the ones that are live right now. Um, Right now, there's not so many active. However, uh, what it allows you to do is have like a small uh, wheeled robot um, uh, with a Raspberry Pi or similar device on it and a camera. Then online, people can actually press buttons that control the robot, like to move it forward, backward, left, right, or in the case of this one here, to turn the lights on and off. Now, remember, if you've got any questions, go to youngwonks.com slash podcast ask them. It doesn't actually have to be related to what we're doing, it just has to be loosely uh, related to making. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is how you would build the basic base robot that you're going to use for something like this. So, I'm going to, and just give me a second, I'm pulling up the questions page in case anybody has that. Okay, no questions yet. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is start getting going with building your robot. By the way, if you're really into build instructions and want like full, you know, step by step and explaining each thing, which we can't really get in the 20 minutes, I recommend you check out our making camp, which will be running over the summer. Contact us um, via Facebook or email and you can uh, learn about that. We'll teach you things like soldering, using a hot glue gun, how to wire stuff up, how to build a robot, etc. However, here we're mainly going to talk about getting set up with the basic Remo.tv robot, something that you could maybe leave around the house uh, and then pilot remotely. Remo.tv, I believe, does allow you to make robots private if you don't want the entire internet access to your robot, but I'll be showing you how to set them up as public. So the first thing that you're going to have is just, you know, your robot base. Now I know you guys uh, mainly use these acrylic um, sheet bases, you know, they're sort of this shape when you look down from the top. Sorry, that's not very good. Uh, now, with a robot like this, what you're going to have is you're going to have your Raspberry Pi here. Give me a sec. Um, Pi. You're going to have a Raspberry Pi about in the middle at the front of the robot so that the people operating the robot can see you're going to have a camera it's going to be vertical you know just looking out so that the camera's eye looks forward and then you're going to connect the camera to the pi now the raspberry pi camera uses a flex cable that connects to a slot on the pi labeled camera when you connect up the camera to the raspberry pi let me show you this actually because it's a little bit tricky. I need to show you, uh, there we go. Okay. This is one of the cables that goes between a Raspberry Pi camera and a Raspberry Pi. It is technically a flex cable and it's going into what I believe is called a CSI port. It's used for sending camera data. Now, as you can see, there are electrical contacts on one side of the cable and there's blue electrical insulation on the other side. It's a little bit of plastic. If you get the cable orientation wrong, there's going to be no electrical connection between the camera and the Pi. So if you um, look at the end of the cable, you'll see there's the shiny side with the metal contacts, and then there's the blue side with no contacts. On the camera side, the blue faces outwards. I will show you this. Give me a moment. Ah, there we go. All right. 
So here I've got just a camera. As you can see, the blue side of the cable is going to face outwards, like the, towards the back of the camera, and the side with metal contacts face, faces towards the circuit board. On the other side, it's a bit more tricky because uh, the camera cable actually goes vertically into a slot on the Pi. Just remember that blue goes towards the Ethernet port. So if you look at a Raspberry Pi, let me find you a high resolution picture. There you go. Okay. Uh, as you can see, next to the USB ports, there's a port where you can plug in an Ethernet cable for internet. Now you see there's two flex cable uh, ports on the Pi. One of them says display, one of them says camera. The camera one is the one you connect Raspberry Pi cameras to. And when you put the cable in, you have to make sure... Oh, hang on, we're on the wrong thing. There we go. You have to make sure that the blue side of the cable is facing the Ethernet port. All right. Now... Next thing we want to talk about is motors. Generally, the motors you guys use on the robots at Young Wonks are these uh, small yellow gear motors, which have a wheel that you can get that connects to them. Now, let me show you what the yellow motors look like, and let's discuss these a bit in the context of robotics. So these are pretty much the most generic uh, beginning, beginning robotics motors you can get. In the end part of these, you can see there's a little silvery cylinder. That's the actual motor. It's got two very small copper contacts where you connect power to the motor. And then if you actually were to break one of these apart, you'll see this. You'll see the end of that motor has a small gear, which goes to a gearbox, uh, which goes to the axle where you attach a wheel. This gearbox increases the torque, but slows down the speed um, of the motor, or sorry, of the output shaft. So, these are really good if you've got a fairly small robot that you're running off batteries. Uh, if you want something higher powered and a bit more robust that moves at a better speed and doesn't have a gearbox that could uh, die easily if it gets stuck, then you might want uh, this motor, which I recommend heavily from Pololu. That's product 4866 up there if you uh, want to know. It's a metal gear motor with an encoder. That means that it, um, you can actually measure the exact position and have something called closed loop control. We'll talk about that in a later episode. Anyway, so what you're going to have are two motors. And then we have to talk about uh, the back. Back is going to be a caster wheel. Now, uh, people sometimes ask, why do you use a caster wheel? for uh, these small beginning robots. And the answer is, if you have four motorized wheels, steering the robot becomes complex to do correctly. Uh, in fact, actually the robot sort of has to skid steer where some of the ropes, sorry, sorry, some of the motors will actually be sliding on the ground and it becomes mathematically tricky to turn a specific amount. So I recommend getting one of these large ball bearing casters is what they're called and having it on the bottom of your robot at the back. That allows the back of the robot to swing and move in any direction it wants without affecting the motion that you're doing with the front motors. Now the last thing we have to talk about with the hardware is your motor controller. Now the motor controller is going to be probably just at the back or something. It's going to have, and I will go over this wiring momentarily. It's going to be probably one of these. We use them a lot at Young Monks because they're fairly cheap. So if you uh, burn one accidentally, it's not a huge issue. Uh, these, but and they're also pretty commonly used uh, for beginning robotics. So it's good to know how to use them. These are the L298N board. So... Let's talk wiring. If you're building a small robot like this, how do you wire it up? This is the trickiest part and people often get it wrong. So I'm actually going to go over this in some detail. Uh, give me a moment. Downloads uh, L, L298N. All right, excellent. Okay, so this is a picture of one that I can draw on. Uh, let's go over some of the more important aspects first. This part here 
sorry, uh, this part here is the actual chip, like this thing, I mean. It's the actual L298N chip. Um, it's a circuit called an H-bridge, which is something that allows you to control uh, current in two directions. So what it's going to let you do is uh, change the direction of the motors. You can drive two motors. You connect one motor here and one motor here using the screw terminal. Sorry, those don't look really like motors. Um, depending on which uh, way you connect the leads around, the motor is going to go uh, in different directions based on what uh, direction input you give to the chip. Uh, you can sort of just work this out by trial and error. Uh, and if they're going like the wrong directions. You just need to change the control signals that you're sending here. So let's talk about this. Uh, this uh, terminal block over here is where you connect up power. Uh, the, the one furthest away from the pins is 12 volts, this one. It says 12 volts. You can actually give it less supply voltage if you want the motors to run to lower voltage. The middle one is ground. And the last one is, um, it's five volts, but you don't use it as long as this jumper is installed. You got to make sure this jumper is installed over here because what it does is it allows, uh, the L29N itself, like this chip to be powered off of the battery power. So get that all hooked up. You've got your battery plus going in where it says 12. You've got your battery minus going into ground. And then this is critically important you must have a common ground between the Raspberry Pi controlling this and the board itself. Let me just check if we've got questions because this is getting complicated. Um, we cannot see your screen. Uh, you should be able to see it now. Sorry, I had it uh, wrong for a sec. How do you put the code on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, we're getting to that. What Arduinos do you recommend for building robots? Um, if the robot doesn't need to do much intelligent stuff, you can get an Arduino Nano because there's a lot of uh, really cheap counterfeit Arduino Nanos you can get from China. But honestly, now the Raspberry Pi Pico is widely available. I do not recommend using an Arduino. Uh, there's just much more powerful processing you can get. Now, yeah, you can see my screen now. Okay. The ground pin, you must take a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi and also connect it into here. Generally, what I have is I've just got the ground wire from the battery. You know, that's this wire, right? The black wire from the battery going into here. But then kind of on top of that, you've also got to have a jumper wire coming in from ground on the Raspberry Pi. Again, it's critically important that there's a common ground between these. It sometimes kind of sort of works if there isn't uh, due to something called coupling, but it's dangerous and can cause things to overheat. You must have a common ground so that all the logic levels are correct. Now these control pins uh, over here, we've talked about in class how to use them, but basically, um, the first three pins control one motor and the last three pins control the other motor. You can see that there's little jumpers here. You're going to have to pull those off if you want to be able to control the motor speed. If you pull those off, then what you do is you set uh, like this pin on and then this pin off uh, and then pulse width modulate the signal on the one that's currently covered by a jumper to control the speed. That'll go one direction. If you switch the pins that are on and off, then it goes the other direction. Again, we have sets on these, and uh, if you want to know exactly how to use them, we can do that. But now we need to talk about what Remo.tv is and how you would use it with a robot like this. So, Remo.tv, uh, apart from this whole web service they have that uh, connects your robot to the wider internet, there's software you actually run on the robot itself, and that software uh, is used to actually stream video and to control the motors. So you're going to use something called the guided installation process. You're going to, uh, you know, get a Raspberry Pi. You've probably already burned uh, an operating system onto your Raspberry Pi's SD card. You're going to boot it up, make sure it's connected to Wi-Fi, and then you are going to have to go and enable SSH on the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to have to connect. Okay, that's a, there's actually a few ways to do this. If you want to enable SSH on the Raspberry Pi, uh, and you can't connect a monitor to the Raspberry Pi, then you can put the SD card into a computer, go to the first partition on the disk, and create an empty file called SSH. SSH, by the way, is secure shell. It's something that allows you to enter commands into the Pi remotely. I hope that answers your question, Danny, on how we'd get the code onto the Pi. The answer is you can SSH in and download stuff there. 
Once you've actually got a command prompt on your Pi by either SSHing into it using Pi at the IP address of the Raspberry Pi or by connecting a monitor, you're going to run this command here which downloads the installer for remo.tv. Remo.tv has a component that has to run on your Raspberry Pi that actually um, you know, does all the video streaming. So you run the command and it's uh, going to ask you some questions. You can use the arrow keys to switch between options and use enter to select an option. So we're going to press yes. It's going to download some stuff, blah, blah, blah. Let it be. Again, any general making questions? Uh, we can see your screen. Some people are in full screen. We can see your screen or we can't see your screen. You can definitely see it. I've got it uh, streaming right now. I can see in the preview. Um, you may want to reload the YouTube page if it's still not working for you. Now this is going to take a while because uh, it runs an update on your Raspberry Pi. But while we're doing that, let's continue on looking at the instructions. The first thing is you're going to actually need an account with remo.tv. So if I log out, if you go up to the login sign up here, you can sign up for an account. You need username, password, confirm password, and email. I'm not a robot. They'll send you an email uh, to verify your email, and then you have an account. And then what you need to do is put in your username here. Now, the next thing you need when setting up a robot to stream and be controlled by remo.tv is a robot API key. Um, so if you go to remo.tv, once you're in your account, I'm going to log back into my account. I already have one. You're going to uh, do add server to create a new robot. You're maybe going to call it test or something. Sorry, that one's already taken. Uh, demo test. All right. So this creates a new robot server. You can actually have multiple robots per server, but I recommend doing one to start with. And you'll see here that it's all available and you can now click on these three dots next to hash general and you'll see there's an API key here. Now I'm obviously not going to show you my API key. This is something you never ever share with people. Whenever you have API keys for a service, it's critically important to your security that you do not show them to people. But you would press copy to clipboard and then you would actually put that API key into the prompt here. Next thing you're going to do, it's going to let you select uh, a robot type. You're going to use the arrow keys to move all the way down to L298N in this list of things, and then probably press spacebar so that the asterisk moves to there. Make sure you've actually got the asterisk on L298N, and then press tab to select the OK button, and then press enter. And then installation is complete. So then on the command line, you're going to do cd tilde slash remo.tv. cd means change directories. It's just going to go into the remo.tv folder. Then you do python controller.py. That should actually be python3. Sorry, there's a mistake in their instructions. Let me show you what that would look like. So I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, running remo right now. Uh, hang on, let me stop it so that I can show you how you would start it. All right, so you SSH into your Raspberry Pi, or you open up a terminal window on the Raspberry Pi with the display connected, and you go CD Remo TV. If you want to see all the files that it downloaded, you can do LS. You'll see there's a Python program that uh, streams video and controls the thing. You're going to do Python3 controller.py. By the way, hot tip for the command line, pressing tab auto completes. So I just need to press control, press tab, auto completes. Very, very useful if you don't like typing. Press enter. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, sudo python3 controller. Sudo is the equivalent of doing right click run as administrator on Windows. And you'll see it'll print something like this, controller started and possibly unknown event type. Uh, that's just if it got a command that it didn't recognize. Now. If you want to change the configuration of the robot, you can do nano, which is a text editor, and then control, uh, sorry, uh, controller.conf. This will open up controller.conf, which is a file we use to configure the thing. Oops, that's my API key. You shouldn't see that. Okay. So if you look through this file, and by the way, if you wanted uh, to not use the command line here, 
you can always just use the file manager on the Raspberry Pi to find this controller.cont file and edit it. You can see that you can change the camera that's being used. Um, you can see you can change the audio settings. You can have it so that it talks when people send messages in the chat. If you've got a speaker connected to the robot, it can use a text to speech to actually talk to people. That's kind of cool and also very creepy. Um, and if you want to switch to a better motor controller, you could set uh, something other than L298N. Now, when you're wiring up your L298N, you're going to have to look at the pin numbers that um, are given in the documentation page from remo.tv on the L298N. As you can see here, um, yeah, the, sorry, the uh, pins that, uh, like the IN1, IN2, ENA pins, these pins you're going to have to uh, connect up to these pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's going to take you a little bit of trial and error here. I believe the way it works um, is that these are the enable pins and... Hang on, yeah, actually that's not right. Give me a moment. Yes, uh, some of these are the enable pins and some of these are the uh, yeah, enable pins and some of these are the direction pins. You might have some issues uh, if your wiring is different to the wiring in uh, here, but you can always change these pin numbers in order uh, for the control to be correct. You're going to want it so that when people press the forward command on the website, the robot actually moves forward. So the end result is you're going to get, and I'm, I'm going to get rid of this one by the way, because uh, I'm not doing that right now. All right, you're going to get something like this. You're going to have a web page. When the robot controller uh, script is running, you're going to have a web page like this. Sorry, it's my internet's bad. Um, you're going to have a web page that shows a video stream from the robot. Looks like this. Oh, that's a bit loud. Hang on. All right, you're going to have a web page with the video stream from this. And then you're going to have some controls here. Now this robot here, they've changed their settings. So instead of forward, backward, left, right, there's one command, which is sing. I'll show you what this thing does. It's quite cool. Somebody hacked one of those uh, plastic singing fish and put it online as a remote controllable robot. I know there are robots out there that can walk like people. I know there are robots out there that can drag someone out of a burning building and save their life. But I consider this one of the greatest robots ever built. It's an internet controlled singing fish and it is genius. Now, if you have any issues setting up your remo.tv... Um, uh, robot and you know, there's always issues as uh, electronics might have issues or you might need to tweak the software a bit to get it to work for you Remo.tv has a discord server you can join uh, and you can also uh, Contact young wonks and they'll put you through to me and I can help you sort it out uh, Remo.tv is a really great service for remote controlling a robot You can use it for telepresence or for having a robot that just runs around your house and lets you see your pets while you're not there yeah, it's, it's a really great service, and uh, I hope some of you will try it out with robots that you have. Now, uh, if there's any more questions, I don't see any more questions, so uh, I'll just like to remind you, our Maker Camp over the summer is open for signups. Uh, if you want to learn, you know, in detail how to solder together and build and glue uh, a robot and program it, you know, the whole process beginning to end, in more unabridged format than what we can do in the podcast, then I uh, highly recommend coming to that.